Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series and in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at how we can continue on with our AI. So in the previous episode we created a basic AI system which would essentially move the AI to the uh, to the player once it finds it using the pawn sensing node. In today's episode we're actually going to be setting up roaming so it will run around uh, when it doesn't actually see the player and this is all going to be based on conditions uh, through two very variables and those two variables are going to be whether or not the player is in range and whether or not the AI is actually already moving. So if you take a quick look inside my viewport here you can actually see the AI is moving by itself it's essentially just getting um, new locations every uh, tick uh, so it's just checking for a new location and it will move to that whenever the player is not in range. The player is up there, it cannot see it. So it's essentially just running about um, until it actually does see the player. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the script that I've got here, what we've got running. Um, it's essentially just a continuation on last episode. So if we take a quick look, and if you haven't actually seen the last episode, make sure you do go ahead and check it out uh, using the annotation in the top right. But anyway, we've got all of our script here from the last episode, which is essentially going to be um, on C pawn, cast 2, and then AI move 2. And then we've got some variables set in here and some branching, and I'm going to try and quickly explain what this is. So essentially what we've done here is event tick, which is every frame inside of the game, it will check to see whether or not the player is in range using this variable and if it's not in range we're also going to check to see if the AI is already moving. If it's not moving already um, then it will go ahead and move the AI to another location within a uh, basically a random location within a set radius that radius being 500 and then we've just got a couple of um, you know set nodes here to actually set the variable for moving on and off anyway so hopefully you have a basic understanding of what we're going to be doing and we're trying to replicate that and show you exactly what it all means and what it does um, while I recreate this so what I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to go ahead and go back to where we were in the last episode. So first things first, I'm going to stop, um, you know, I'm going to stop simulating the game. I'm going to delete all of my script from uh, that I've created here and this bit. And hopefully, if you've watched the last episode, this is what you should have on your screen right now. Just cast a first person character and AI move to. So the first thing we need to do is add an event tick and then basically what this is going to do is like I said every frame is going to check whether or not the player is in range and whether or not the player is moving so event tickers is essentially the event and now we need to run these conditions those conditions being in range and moving so let's go ahead and do that so to do that just go ahead and drag it out and we're going to add in a couple of branch nodes we're going to add in two of these and we also need to make a couple of variables. Um, we're going to have one variable for in range and one variable for moving. So to create those, just go ahead and press variable. Make sure it, the variable type is a boolean, so it can be true or false. And then once you've done that, just go ahead and drag these in. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one here. So drag it in to get for in range and moving, just like this. So go ahead and drag in in range to the first one and then moving into the second one. So basically, now what we need to do is, um, you only want it to move to another location if the player isn't in range. So to do that, with the in range value, just go ahead and set the condition to false, so if it isn't in range, and hook that up to the next branch. And from this branch, it's gonna check whether or not the uh, AI is already moving. So if the player, uh, if the AI is not moving already, we're going to go ahead and hook that up to an AI move to. So just right click and type in, uh, type in AI move to, just like we did in the past episode. So if he's not moving already, just go ahead and hook this up here. And now the next bit is getting a random location. It's quite easy really. So you got destination here, drag that out and type in get random location and I'm going to advise that you use uh, get random point in navigatable radius that way um, you know it's a location inside of your nav mesh the player as uh, not the player sorry the AI can actually get there so just go ahead and click that and we're going to hook a few things up into this so first things first we need to get the actor location to actually get the origin get actor location 
So we got origin, radius, and then we got nav mesh and filter class. We're not going to bother with those two, um, but for now we're just going to work with the origin, which is essentially the point of origin, basically where the player is now. So we want a radius uh, within that character uh, within that AI. We're going to set the radius to something like 500, nice big radius, so he doesn't just run around in small circles. So that should be all set up now. Next, we need to set up, um, you know, the conditions, uh, not the conditions, sorry, the variables, so turning them true and false. So for the in range, we need to set that using the on C pawn. So uh, basically between here, we need to add in a little set uh, node to actually change in range to true once uh, the, the AI can actually see the player. So just go ahead and drag in in range and put in set. And then we're just going to drag this in just like that. And now if we go ahead and press in range true, you know, it knows that the player is now in range and that's all fine and dandy. So now we've done that. The next thing we need to do is set moving. So over here, we need to drag in uh, set moving and we need two of these, one for true and one for false. So we're just going to hook this up to AI move two. So at the top, we're going to hook up to moving true, and we're going to basically, once the AI move to has been executed, um, you know, it's going to go ahead and set that to true. And on success, basically once it's finished or once it's failed, it's going to set it to, you know, not moving. So let's just go ahead and uh, compile and uh, press play. And let's go ahead and see what happens. Right now, the pawn isn't actually moving. The reason for that is because we haven't hooked up the pawn node here, uh, sorry, the pawn reference to AI move 2. It's quite simple really, all we got to do is go ahead and just get a reference to itself, um, or you can use one from the script that we made in the last episode, so just go ahead and drag that out, just like this, compile, press play, and he now starts running around, finding random locations. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to show you for this episode. Hopefully that uh, gives you a better insight to AI, allows you to, you know, work with branching and conditions, and hopefully just give you a whole better idea, really, of blueprints. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.